Hello everyone, in this tutorial video, I'd like to explain how to animate in Blender, as well as how the layout is not intuitive at first if you are experienced with other types of animation like frame by frame, but it is still relatively simple once you get adjusted to how it works. In particular, you will see on the right hand menu on the side of the screen is data relating to the object's location, rotation, and scale, and two buttons to the right of each option, one that locks it, and one that allows you to animate it. Since we are working with animation in this video, we want to click on the animate button like so. You will now see a marker on the animation timeline on the bottom of the screen that indicates that it is one instant in time in the animation. If you attempt to change a property without a marker, it will not be saved like so. And so, every time you wish to change a property to a specific value, you must add a marker at the frame you wish to change it at. Like so. Note, however, that Blender is very particular about the order you do it in. You must make the change before you add the marker or otherwise it will not process it, almost as if you never added the marker to begin with. Like so, doing it again for accuracy. And now you will see the animation is successful. Blender also automatically takes care of all of the frames in between the keyframes for you, called tweening for short. And you can control the tweening by clicking on key and then going to interpolation mode. However, I prefer doing all of it manually so that way I can make it as accurate as possible instead of letting Blender guess things for me. And so, if I wish to change something in between, I would simply add a new marker between the two markers, like so. Unfortunately, Blender's animation tool is restricted in what it can actually animate. As in the case of this cube, for example, it can only animate the most basic properties like the location, rotation, and general scale. You cannot animate topology details like the faces or the vertices individually. It is also important to note so on the top right part of the screen, you will have a scene collection with different objects. So far, I have been focused only on meshes models, but you can also animate things like the camera, for example, which is important if you want to zoom in or zoom out of a scene, for example. For things that are not models, however, you can animate their properties as well as their basic spatial dimensions. So for example, you can change the focal length of the camera to make the scene blurry and not blurry from the same distance. And you can animate its depth of field and the type of camera if you wish to switch mid-film details like that. Similarly, for lighting, you can animate its color property if you want it to change, like a disco light. 
you can animate its power property if you want it to dim out over time. Details like that. As almost everything, besides the basic shapes slash meshes, have properties that you can alter that are not related to the topology. In my next tutorial video, I like to talk about how to actually render slash finish your project, including how to add sound in a 3D environment using the speaker objects. See you then.